The Avalanche did have a game to play, though. Game four against the Stars. Colorado also without defenseman Devon Taves in game four due to illness. But Jonathan Drouin back after missing 14 games with a lower body injury. Opening period of this one. Colorado with the power play. Kale McCarr gets stripped of the puck by Wyatt Johnston. The initial shot is stopped, and then Johnston buries his own rebound. A real nice play from the almost birthday boy. He turns 21 just a couple hours after game time. Strips Makar of the puck and then buries the shorthanded goal. His team leans six of the playoffs. Stars up 1-0. Into the second, Caleb Jones, who drew into the lineup for the injured Taves, called for his second minor penalty of the game. And then on the ensuing power play. Dallas off to the power play. Gerard puts him down a second time for good measure. No stick for Lekkinen as well up top. Try to isolate him. Haskin in. They all isolate him. Through the shot. Yeah. Johnson shoots and scores. Johnson with his second of the game. He's got goals both shorthanded and on the power play. The only other play to do that, player to do that in a playoff game at the age of 20 or younger, one Wayne Gretzky. Johnson's seventh of the playoffs, and the Stars have a 2 0 lead. And then six minutes later, Logan Stankoven. To Miro Haskinen. His point shot's going to be Alexander Georgiev. Dallas out shooting Colorado 22 7. They now lead 3 0. Just over a minute later, Puck bounces off Druen, goes to Casey Middlestat. Middlestat scores. It's his second of the playoffs, and that cuts the deficit to two. Let's take you to the third period. Stars now up 4 1. Colorado with the net empty. Johnson's got a chance for the hat trick. What a nice gift that would be, but he passes it to Sam Steele instead. On the night before his birthday, Johnston gives up the chance for the Hattie. After the goal, the teammates sharing a little laugh. Dallas now up 3-1 in the series as the Stars blow out the Avalanche 5-1. But all of the talk postgame was on the loss of Nichushkin. How much did Val let down you and this team? Well, uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to go there. I think... Like, listen, Val obviously is struggling with something, right? I have two thoughts. Yeah, it sucks for our team. We got to turn the page. We got to go play way better than we did today. There's still 20 plus guys in that room that care and that want to win and and that are here, and that's what we have to focus on. It hurts our team. There's no question. He's a great player. And the second one is like. I've gotten to know Val as a person and I've gotten to know him as one of our teammates and a player and I want what's best for him. And I want him to be happy and I want him to be content in his life, whether that's with our team or not with our team. I want the best for him and his family. I think all of our guys are the same and we hope that he can like find some peace and, and get help. And so that's the other side of it. Like it's not, Hockey's not life and death, although we treat it like it is. And so Val's a big priority, and our team's like another one. Now it's separated. They're not together. 